Hello and welcome back to Hardcore Season 2. As you can probably tell from the glint of my armor, I'm playing in a different update to the last episode. I haven't jumped straight to 1.20. I'm actually in a snapshot for a different version entirely as I was hoping to do something that will add a little more character to this world to help separate it out from the rest. That's right, I'm currently in Snapshot 21W03A. Why? Wait, hang on. I want to go for a bit of a zoom of the FOV here. There we go. Well, I actually have a little bit of history with this snapshot, and it's a version that I usually try to update most of my worlds to. Awesome. That was perfect. Now zoom back out again. One reason was that you could still craft bundles in this version of the game without the use of a data pack. That's not so much of an issue anymore, though, because Mojang added an official bundle data pack that's already accessible in the game. But that didn't used to be the case, so the only way to get them would be to play in a version where the crafting recipe hadn't been taken out yet. But anyway, that's the main reason why I've been so merciless on killing rabbits in the last two episodes. I wanted to craft a couple of bundles. The other reason I'm in this snapshot, though, is something even more game-breakingly spectacular. Wait, why is it so quiet? Wait, what? Where are my villagers? No! <laughs> I spent so much time and effort on them and not dating to this snapshot as to straight up kill them all! I had so many of them in this village. Oh man, now I have to start all the way from zero with them again. <laughs> That's a genuine massacre. It's alright, it's alright. I may have lost them all, but I've only made two episodes for this series so far. I can repopulate and rebuild, I'm sure. <laughs> I guess they served their purpose, didn't they? They gave me this full set of god armor. Those villagers may be gone, but their legacy and impact on this world will live forever. I need a pair of shears. I need them so that I can get some glow lichen. Oh, that's the other thing about Snapshot 21W03A. This was the snapshots that added glow lichen to the game. Oh, they were so wonderfully broken back then. <laughs> hey, how did you escape the cow pen? That's not allowed. Oh, even the carrot and potato farmers are gone. Though they were especially useless. They were so slow that I don't think their existence really made any difference in the last episode. I had to farm those crops manually anyway. <laughs> anyway, let's craft up some bundles. So I was lucky enough to obtain 12 rabbit leather without the use of any looting on my weapons. So we can actually craft ourselves up two bundles. That's amazing. Bundles are a cool little item that can help with your inventory management when filled with lots of clutter. You can use them to store multiple different stackable items into one slot, up to 64 items total. Unless you put in something that can only be stacked to 16, like enderpearls. In which case, the number will be less. But I think that bundles will prove to be rather useful when I update to 1.20, as I imagine that there will be a lot of inventory clutter involved when trying to experience the new archaeology future. So I'll be glad to have these for sure. I had bundles in my last hardcore world as well, and I like to fill it with the really useful items that can clog up your inventory if you try to hold on to all of them. I'm talking about stone cutters, crafting tables, ender chests, all the useful stuff that I think I might need. All in one slot. Now if I'm going to hunt down some glow lichen, I'm going to need a new pickaxe. I'm also going to craft a new bucket, because we're going to need some lava. Now which direction should I mine in? Uh, let's go this way. Ooh, lava already! Awesome! I forget, were raw ores added in this version of the game? Can I fortune this iron? No. The answer is no. I'll put that back. Oh, actually, let's mine it all, and then we can fortune it all up ourselves once we've updated again. Ooh, diamonds! That is a welcome surprise. I think we've got six ores here. Let's see how many we get. Sixteen? <laughs> wow! <laughs> that was an incredibly good find. Well, my fortune pickaxe has just reached one durability, so let's just repair it with the diamond pick that I crafted earlier. Oh yeah, that's much better. Ooh, I've just found copper! That confirms it then, I've dug into newly generated chunks. That means that glow lichen shouldn't be too far away then. Hey, more diamonds! Oh, is it just a two? Oh wait, no, there's more! Oh, we only got five that time. I guess that makes up for being so lucky with the last diamond vein. What is this? It's a ravine. Okay, okay, uh, let's create a safe tunnel for us here. <laughs> 
Creeper! Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I threw my pick. How did I manage that? <laughs> Was that seriously my fight or flight response just then? We're alright though. I think that creeper got washed into the lava. But that's why you stay out of the marines, everyone. Drop creepers coming out of nowhere can and will get you killed. <laughs> Ooh, we found our first tough. Wait, calcite? Oh, this is an amethyst geode. I forgot about this. Snapshot 21W03A had tough geodes rather than basalt geodes. Oh, that's super cool. We've got a really rare structure in this world now. Is there anyone in here? No? Good, I think we're safe. This is some really cursed lava here. Can I jump under this? Oh, bad idea. I can still get my head in it. This is a really weird screenshot moment, but I'm all here for it. I could caption it. Moments before disaster, or something like that. <laughs> I really don't want to give a block update to this lava, so I'm going to try and avoid it as much as possible. But I think I want to make myself a spyglass, so I'm just going to mine this crystal here. Yeah, there we go, we have an amethyst shard. Tough geodes are really cool. So you know I have to take a screenshot of the coordinates here. Oh, sweet. We have a little copper just here for the spyglass too. I think I just need two copper ingots. And now I can make myself a spyglass. Awesome. Now I have vanilla zoom. I can even zoom in on your face. Hey, what do you think you're doing? You know I can see you, right? Stop picking your nose. I'd really like to try and preserve this tough geo. So I'm going to try and put these blocks back where I found them to the best of my ability. I can hear mobs in a cave nearby. I'm trying to find it because there might well be some glow lichen nearby. Oh, there it is. I think I'm going to need to take care of these mobs before I go exploring, though. Anyone else in here? No? Oh, man, this cave just leads straight into that ravine. That's not what I wanted. Is there any glow lichen that I can reach from here, though? Oh, yes, there it is. Sweet. <laughs> Let's just grab that real quick. So why is glow lichen important in this snapshot? Well, since this was the first snapshot that it was added in, it was in an incredibly buggy state. You see, you could waterlog glow lichen by putting it into a water source block. But for whatever reason, this affected the way it interacted with placing it in a lava source as well. Since there is no such thing as lava logging, unfortunately, although I wish there was, that would be so cool and then be an incredibly awesome way to light up a floor with lava logged stairs. Oh, I've distracted myself. So because lava logging doesn't exist, the first thing that the game tried to do when placing glow lichen into a lava source block is to instantly convert it into water. Amazing, right? That's a neat little trick. But here's the thing. This bug totally works in the nether too. You can use it to get water into the nether. And yeah, I do have some history with this bug. I did it in Hardcore Season 2. I even had an actual series based on building something that I like to call the Nether Aquarium. Although I did end up having to cut that short because that project was far too grindy for an early game world. We did end up with a pretty huge water cube though. I also meant to do it back when I was doing the Hardcore Armourless Challenge. But luckily I saw reason because that would have been an absolute nightmare with the lack of depth strider, respiration and aqua affinity. Anyway, the reason why I wanted to utilise this bug again is because I have something I want to do at some point in the future. I never did end up getting anywhere near to finishing that nether aquarium, did I? So, what if I did in this world? Don't get your hopes up on that one happening anytime soon though. That's definitely a super late endgame project to take on for sure because it is a super grindy and dangerous. I am not yet prepared for that one. If we're going to the nether though, I'm going to need a gold helmet just in case we run into any piglins. Oh, awesome! Protection 2 and Unbreaking 2. I'll need those. So, off to the nether I go. Oh! That pillager patrol just spawned right in front of me. You know, I'm kind of sad that I never got one of these to appear when I was playing this world in 1.14.2. I think that was when you could still get vindicators spawning in the patrols as well. That would have been so good to see. Definitely would have been dangerous though. Vindicators are no joke. <laughs> so here we are at our spawn nether portal. So let's break the nether once again. As is tradition on this channel. Oh, I can't forget. We need to put on our gold helmet now. Now I think I need to just pillar straight up to the top of the world. Oh wait, actually, I should find out where zero zero is first. I think I want to put the water at the highest spot of zero zero. Where is that? Not too far away from here. Oh, I think it's directly above the nether wart room here. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous trying to tunnel my way up here. I really don't want to dig into a lava pocket. That would be bad. Real bad. 
Oh, I've hit bedrock. Let's just mine out some space for ourselves up here. Okay, this is the block. This is zero, zero. Here we go. This is the moment. Yes! Once again, as is tradition at this point, we have water in the nether. Oh, I love that I can do this. It just creates so many possibilities for this dimension. It's absolutely unreal. The water flows in the nether dimension again, and this world now has just the right amount of unique character for me to fully take this world to the limit. I feel good. And you know what that means? That's right. Now that I have god armor, bundles, and water in the nether, I can finally update my world to 1.20 and enjoy the Trails and Tales update. Let's not dilly-dally. Let's go. Bang! As you can tell from the lack of an incredibly bright shimmer from my armor, we are no longer in Snapshot 21W03A. We are now in 1.20. Oh, there's so much that I want to see right now. Cherry trees, archaeology, armor trims. It's all so good. Let's go exploring, shall we? Oh gosh, no, it's nighttime. I can't deal with this. Well, I can deal with this, but my current armor set that I'm locked into wearing for the first five episodes is just too fragile to deal with too many proper nights. I don't think it's too bad, though. I think the morning is just around the corner. Die, skeleton! Don't you dare hit me! Oh yeah, like a pro. I think the first thing I want to do is to get somewhere high and turn up my render distance. I'm not locking myself to 12 chunks anymore, so it would be good to see what the surrounding spawn chunks are like. I think the top of a jungle tree will be perfect. Ooh, cocoa beans! I should probably grab a couple of those. In fact, let's just take this entire tree. Let's just pillar ourselves up, see what our world has to offer. Bring me that horizon. Oh, first notable thing is a shipwreck, I think. Might be worthwhile to loot. It's looking like we've got an entire ocean over there, actually, which could be cool. And we've got a ruined portal over there. Wait, what is that? Is that a shipwreck? Excuse me, what? <laughs> what on earth is a shipwreck doing at the very top of a mountain? You know, I, I like to try and come up with a story of how shipwrecks ended up where they are, what happened to them in their lifetimes, and this one, this one just breaks reality. <laughs> what even happened here? Other than that completely broken shipwreck, I don't think I'm seeing anything too interesting to note. No rare biomes just here, that's okay. But it would have been cool to have a spawn mater again. <laughs> We're in 1.20 though, which means that bamboo is awesome now. We've got to grab some of it. Oh, there we go. I'm just on my way back to my starter village and I've spotted the new cherry grove biome in the distance on the other side of the desert. That's awesome. I'll be sure to visit it later. Oh, sweet. Another village has just generated on the other side of the plateau next to my starter village. We can easily repopulate the villages. Awesome. It's probably going to be a good idea to plant all of this bamboo that I have. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to use bamboo blocks in this village, but the new blocks are the new thing. I must have the new thing. Ooh, sweet, look at that. We've got another jungle near the village, that's awesome. I guess I didn't need to bring cocoa beans and bamboo back with me. <laughs> Before I go exploring though, I've got to improve my inventory situation so that I can carry more loot. Yes, I've got bundles, but what would really help is an ender chest, so I have to mine some more obsidian. That's one eye of ender, and there we go. We finally have ourselves an ender chest now. Now I just need silk touch. If I can just get it to somehow appear on the first two enchantment slots, that would be awesome. Oh, I haven't gotten it yet though. Luckily it's night time, so I can just go outside and kill stuff for more XP. I'm going to try not to take too many hits though. I'm kind of worried that my leather armor isn't going to survive for five episodes due to getting too expensive. We can't have that. <laughs> I wonder, can I spawn more zombies via zombie reinforcements if I just punch this guy? Is anything happening? Oh, please work. No? Ah, well, it was worth a try. No, the dawn approaches. I'm running out of mobs. <laughs> okay, I think this creep is going to be my last mob. Come here, you. Yeah! Take that! Oh, my boots are right on the verge of death right now. <laughs> now that it's day, though, I guess I have to resort to killing the local wildlife. Sorry, chickens. Ooh, I should probably grab these feathers, actually. I could make a brush. I'd love a good brush. Okay, here we go. One more time. Come on, come on. Yes, we've got Silk Touch. Fantastic. We've got a dire boot situation though. So the rest of our levels can go to repairing them. 
<laughs> Nine levels already? Oh, I'm not looking forward to seeing the cost of the next time. It's gonna be a shocker. I think my leather chest plate has a little bit of time left in it before I repair that one though. So let's try to delay that one a little longer. If I stagger the repairing process, then that'll give me more of a chance to gain the levels for each piece of armor. Okay, village, show me what you've got. Please tell me you're well populated. What on earth happened to the terrain generation here? Why do Savannah villages always seem so broken? <laughs> okay, what's in here then? Ooh, cartography table, I'll be taking that. Why is there a hole in the floor? What's going on with this village? And how did I not notice that? I just walked right over it. <laughs> oh, cool, we've got a second cartography table. Uh, excuse me? What is that doing here? Why is there a desert temple in my savannah biome? Oh man, my world is so broken. I don't think it lights my update process. <laughs> okay, shield up. Let's see if there are any creepers down here. Nope. Nope. I think the place is empty. Thanks for the TNT. Now, what have we got down here? Oh yay, we've got a golden apple again. Ooh, and a second one. And look at that. We have our first armor trims, everyone. Oh, wow. We've got a protection for books as well. That's awesome. This was a really good desert temple. We've got some really good stuff down here this time. <laughs> oh, yeah. See that? We've got some suspicious sand here. But I don't have a brush on me. I didn't think I'd need one if I was just visiting the Savannah Village. I'm going to have to come back here later to dig all of that up. Oh, that's a decent amount of iron in there. Nice. I like the gold too, but I've run out of space, which is a good reason to get my ender chest out so that I can store all of my goodies in there. There we go. Ooh, library. Guess there's some books for me to steal. Okay, nighttime approaches. Most of the villagers are trying to sleep. I need to try and save as many as possible if I'm going to repopulate my starter village. You want to go in there too? Okay, sir, your wish is my command. There's someone in here too. Let's lock them in. Hello there, cleric. I hope you like your house because you'll be staring at those walls for a while. Okay, I think we've saved a sufficient amount of villagers, so let's head back now. Now that we've updated to 1.20 though, I can fortune my ores up for extra materials. I'll need that, especially for the iron. I get that I'm going to want a lot of hoppers soon, but we can also mine up all of the copper and the small amount of gold that I have too. Alright, a stack and 49 copper. Let's get that smelting away. I've only got three gold ore, let's see what we get back. Seven raw gold. Be worth it. Now for the iron. Oh, I've got quite the pile here. It should turn out to be quite a lot. Oh, sweet. I've got over four stacks of the stuff. <laughs> now that I've got some copper ingots, though, I can finally craft myself a brush. So I should be able to actually do the archaeology thing now. There we go. We now have our brush. So now I can brush the sus stuff. Since we now have the armor trim templates, though, I want to apply them to our armor. I only have the two June templates, but you can craft more of them with seven diamonds, the trim itself, and the material block that goes with that trim, which I think in June's case is sandstone. This is very expensive on the diamonds to do, but I like that it gives diamonds a real purpose again, because they kind of became a bit redundant now that you can get infinite diamond tools and armor from villagers. So something to dedicate my diamonds to is really good. And there we go. We now have six Dune armor trim templates, and I'm going to use four of them on my very first set of armor here. For that, I'm going to need a smithing table. Before I apply the trims though, I'd like to dye my leather armor. I don't really have many dyes currently, so we'll just grab some of whatever's in this chest and do a little random mixing, I guess. <laughs> okay, we're going to use blue dye first, and we're going to make sure we do the same thing for both the chest plate and the boots. Then we're going to add purple to both, cyan to both, and you know what? Cyan to both again! There we go. Is that a good color? Yeah, I think it is. And now we can use the new smithing table functionality to apply these trims to my armor to give them a new design. So let's get naked for this. I was thinking that we could go for a gradient. So amethyst first on the boots, then lapis on the leggings, then diamond on the chest plate and helmet. Oh, this is awesome. We're even getting a new advancement for this. Okay, then how do we look? Oh, wow. You know what? I actually really like that. <laughs> I think we've gone for a really good armor trim design here. What do you all think? It's pretty cool, right? I'm afraid I'm going to have to cut that episode off there though, or this episode will end up being way too long. I was just having so much fun exploring 1.20 and got way too far ahead of myself. I recorded too much footage. 
so if you want to see just what I get up to in the future, please feel free to subscribe and like this video. It'll really help me out. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.